I'm gonna tell you five YouTube settings that all YouTubers need to know about because they can affect the views that you're getting, they can affect the engagement on your channel, they can even help with your workflow. And we're starting right now. What is going on? My name is Nick from TuberTools.com. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you wanna learn how to grow your channel, make videos and all types of other YouTube related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So inside of YouTube, there's a bunch of settings that a lot of people don't take the time to explore that are really important to you as a content creator. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna take you through some of those settings and I'm gonna show you some things that are really important that you need to know about. The very first is the YouTube advanced settings. To get to that, you just go to youtube.com slash advanced underscore settings. This particular area is where you add your channel keywords, which basically gives YouTube an overview of what your channel's about. So you definitely wanna fill that in, but another thing that is extremely important on this page is if you look where the channel recommendations are, there's a little radio button right there that you wanna make sure that's checked that says, allow my channel to appear in other channels recommendations. The reason that this is important is because if you do not have this checked, then YouTube is not gonna show your videos next to other videos on the platform. So it's really important to make sure that you have this checked. I've reviewed tons of channels that didn't have this checked. So make sure that yours is. And another thing that's really cool on this page, if you scroll down, is your Google Analytics ID. That's where you actually put your ID to connect your YouTube channel to your Google Analytics. The cool thing about that is it'll give you some additional information to what is going on on your channel. For example, it's gonna show you the times that people are most active on your channel. It's gonna show you how long you retain people over time, which is really cool. It's gonna show you user flow and so on. As a matter of fact, you know how I'm always encouraging people to make sure that their channel page is optimized and that it's clear what's going on in their channel inside of their channel header and all that stuff? Well, if you look at what's up on the screen right now, you'll see why on this list, the YouTube channel page gets tons of activity in comparison to the other options that people have when they land on your channel page. Anyway, a lot of really cool stuff in there if you're somebody that likes to nerd out on that stuff. Next up on the list is the upload to Defaults. This one is a humongous time saver. Basically with the upload defaults, it allows you to set all of your settings for every time that you upload a video so that you don't have to fill in everything all the time. So for this, you can actually put together a description template that you can add in there. And then that way, every single time that you upload a video to YouTube, you've got all of this stuff already in there. You've got links to playlist, you've got your auto subscribe link, you've got your social media stuff so that you don't have to keep it in a notepad and find that every time like it's in there when you upload a video. I'll actually link to a description template video that I made uh, down in the description below so that you can check that out once this video is complete. But as a whole, this page just by itself can massively speed up your workflow if you use it properly. Another setting that's really important is on that same upload defaults page and on all of your video pages, you have a licensing option when you upload your videos. Basically, you have a standard option and you have a Creative Commons option. The difference between the two is this. If you have the standard option selected, basically you're just saying, hey, YouTube has has the right to show this video to people on the platform, but you're not allowing anybody else to use that video for other purposes. However, if you have the Creative Commons option checked, then other people can reuse that video. You still own the rights to that video, but other people can use that video in their video as long as they follow the license terms. So unless you want other people to be able to use your stuff, don't use that option because you can actually even search on YouTube by the licensing so that you can find other videos to use. I can't wait to see the comments on that one for anybody that didn't know what that was and didn't know that they were giving permission for other people to use their content. Next up is the branding page. You see the little subscribe button that's down here? That little subscribe button is added on the branding page. It allows you to add a branding watermark to your videos where you can add a logo or you can add something like the subscribe button that's down here right now. If you want one of those, I actually have them available on my website, tubertools.com. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. You can get a pack of different options for I believe $1.99 so that you can turn that spot into an additional place that is a call to action for people to subscribe. The next setting is in the community section. Now inside of the community section, there's actually a couple of things 
things that I wanna bring your attention to here. One of those being that you can add moderators, but you can also see all of the people that you've banned in this area as well. So let's say that during your live stream, you happen to ban somebody on accident. This is the area that you go to in order to unban that person. On this page, you can also add to your blocked words list. And what that is, is basically a list of words to where if anybody says them in a comment or they say them in a live stream, YouTube is gonna hold those comments or the live stream comments for review which basically means that you're only gonna see them if you go try to see them, and that the people that are watching your videos and that are participating in the live streams, they're not even gonna show up for them. So if you have things that you don't want people to say in your comment section, like let's say that you have a bunch of bad words you don't want people to say, or you have a specific thing that people pick on you about or anything like that, then you can just simply add those words or phrases to your blocked words list, and then boom, YouTube is pretty good about filtering those out for you. In addition to YouTube features that you should know about, I also have a list of tools that can help you with your channel and help you with everything that you're doing on YouTube that you should know about as well, you'll see it right up here at the top of the screen. I recommend that you click on that now. And to learn more about growing your channel, making videos and all types of other YouTube related stuff, start now by hitting the round subscribe icon so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.